Philippe. Well, for more on this, we're going to turn now to astronomer Emmanuel Lelouch of the Paris Observatory. Thank you for being with us here on France 24. Before I ask you about this probe, let's clear the air. What's your religion? Is Pluto a planet or not? Pluto is not a planet. Oh, oh and wh why not? Because the planet is defined as a body who has cleared its environment. Pluto is surrounded by hundreds to thousands of bodies that are similar to itself. And Pluto is not much larger than its surrounding bodies. Therefore, Pluto is not a single isolated body as a planet by definition should be. It's just the leader of a rich family of objects, the trans-Neptunian objects. Pluto is not a planet. It doesn't mean that Pluto is not interesting, rather the opposite, as New Horizons has revealed yesterday. And the irony is that the probe took off in 2006, the year in which Pluto was stripped of its title as uh, the ninth planet of our solar system. Let me ask you then, uh, we saw m many, uh, m many amazing things in those pictures. What surprised you the most? The most actually surprising to me is the appearance of Pluto's moon Charon. We expected, I think most of scientists expected Charon to be covered by craters because Charon has been bombarded by meteorites, asteroids. It has no atmosphere. It has no atmosphere to protect it. And it has been bombarded for eons by meteorites. Yet the surface has a few craters. Instead of craters, he has a rich geology. It shows canyon, it shows fractures. And this means that this surface is geologically active. This is, I think, the biggest surprise. So that means there's internal heat. There is internal heat. And the question is, what is its heat? And we don't know. We, we don't know. We know that some of the um, satellites of the icy giant planets, of the gas giant planets, have also, um, are also geologically active. But we know that there is a source of energy that comes from the tidal energy that dissipated between the planet and the moons. But Charon has no giant planet in the vicinity that could provoke tidal tidal heating. So what is the source of energy? We don't know yet. And do you think we'll know? Yeah, we'll know. And we'll know after the geologists try to model this structure that we are just discovering. Remember, we have seen one image of Sharon so far. It's just the beginning of a new exploration. Something like 1%, right, of all the data that's going to be sent back so far. Not even. 1%. After one week, in next Monday or so, we'll, we'll have recorded 1% of the data. It will take 16 months to get all the data from, from Pluto and, and its environment to Earth. Now, what's also interesting is, um, and this is uh, something I read, was that um, outside of Pluto, there's this ring of asteroid belts yes. called the K Kuiper Belt. Correct. And uh, 65 million years ago, it's thought that one of the rocks from this uh, belt came and hit Mexico, and that's why we don't have dinosaurs anymore. What, c can there be practical implications <clears throat> from this trip in terms of, I don't know, saving the Earth in case... Uh, a meteorite might come our way. Well, first, we are not sure where the asteroid that hits Mexico 65 years ago came from. Actually, it could have come from the inner asteroid belt, not from the distant Kuiper belt. Um, second, yet, but this asteroid have been there for 4.5 billion years. And every often and a while, they come to Earth. And there are programs to protect Earth against this asteroid, try to deflect them in case they, they would show up. Um, I, I don't think this particular mission will teach us more about the probability of um, how often an asteroid would come to hit Earth. But there are models for that. And what will we learn from this? What's the most practical uh, application of what we're going to discover yeah. with these pictures that you're talking about? So, as I said, Pluto is the leader of a rich family of bodies that, are, that testify of the condition of solar system formation because these bodies are cold and preserved from... Uh, influence of the sun, they are the relic of solar system formation. So studying these bodies should teach us about the physical and chemical conditions in which the solar system was formed. But actually, Pluto is relatively evolved because Pluto has an atmosphere. We know this from Earth-based observation. And the at atmosphere of Pluto is shaping, in fact, is a landscape. So Pluto itself might not be the best candidate to teach us about solar system formation. But as you know, New Horizons, after the Pluto uh, encounter, will visit one or two more uh, Kuiper Belt objects in three or four years from now. And it will visit small, small uh, bodies devoid of atmosphere. And these will be most likely will be more primitive, actually, th than Pluto.
And and you were saying at the outset, uh, this moon that's uh, around Pluto, Sharon, yes, uh, is perhaps in that case. No, actually, we think that Sharon is the result of a collision collision between a pre-Pluto body, another Kuiper Belt sibling of Pluto, and Pluto itself. And part of the mantle of Pluto was excavated and formed Sharon, much in the way that our moon formed when the proto-Earth was hit by a planet similar to Mars. So Sharon is part of Pluto's family, I would say. But there are more Kuiper Belt objects. We know about 1,600 of them. And most of them, the small ones, are much more primitive, less evolved than Pluto and its system. So actually, it's where might of the gold could still come. All right, so tell it to us straight here, Emmanuel Lelouch. Is it just a sales pitch for, for NASA funding, the fact that everybody was so amazed that uh, this probe did succeed? I know one astronomer c uh, compared it to what? Uh, shooting at a target and hitting a bullseye from 130 miles away. I don't think it's actually that difficult to target Pluto with very good accuracy. Look, for example, what the engineers of Rosetta from HISA has, have done. They have been able to send the lander onto this comet with an accuracy of 10 meters. Well, of course, the lander bounced back and a lot of things happened. But in terms of accuracy, they were able to target it with an accuracy of 10 meters. Mm. So which is order of magnitude more uh, demanding than what has been done by NASA on, on Pluto. And in this case, the big fear was that had an object in some way met the path of the probe, yes, that would have been it. Yes, because we didn't know and we still don't know well actually what is the dust environment of Pluto. We know that Pluto has five moons, Sharon, but four other smaller moons. And it might be possible that Pluto also has rings like the giant planets. We actually know, we know one of trans-Neptunian objects that does have a ring. So if there are rings around Pluto, there could be dust, particles going around. And at the speed of the spacecraft, which was 15 kilometers per second, any, any dust particle of the size of a, a grain of, of rice would have destroyed the spacecraft. This was the main danger. It didn't so far. No, it didn't. And that we know it didn't and it will not because now the, the probe is like two or three million kilometers away from Pluto and the risk is over. On the basis of what we've learned so far, and like you say, this could help us give us valuable clues into the origins of our own solar system. Where do you think the money is best spent in the years to come? In terms of space exploration, I would think that the, um, <clears throat> the graal of, of planetology is sample return. Because when we, we return sample of planetary bodies to Earth, then we are able to analyze them with um, extraordinary accuracy. And some of the greatest discoveries, for example, on the origin of the moon, have been uh, obtained by analyzing sample from, from the moon. It's only when you bring back sample that you're able to reach the, the necessary accuracy to understand really how things were formed and, and how they evolved. Now, New Horizons is a reconnaissance mission. We had no idea of what Pluto and Sharon looked like. Now we have face on, an, on names. And so it's, it's the first step, but we need to go there once, once more to possibly to land on them. And then the dream would be to bring back material from their surface or even better from another more primitive trans-Neptunian object and bring it to Earth. All right, the idea to make it a round trip ticket next time. Right. For, for these NASA probes, Emmanuel Lelouch of the Paris Observatory. Many thanks for being with us here today. You're welcome. On France 24.